So Brian Johnson is a proponent of the idea that you can reverse age by doing multiple procedures. I'm going to give you my reaction to his philosophy and his approach to uh, aging and rejuvenation. I certainly disagree with most of what he does. My name is Brian Johnson, and for the past three years, I've been trying to slow my speed of aging as much as possible using data and science. Today is my favorite face treatment. So when we started Blueprint three years ago, I had really bad skin damage. I was in the sun all the time as a kid. I never wore sunscreen. So when we started Blueprint, we did my baseline measurements to look at UV damage, browns, reds. It was really bad. I looked like a zombie. And we've been working at skin quality for the past three years, trying all kinds of things. And today I'm gonna to share with you my favorite treatment. So to begin with, Brian has sun damaged skin because he is a, a very light, fair skinned individual who has red tones to his skin and is very uh, easily subjected to ultraviolet light, which can damage his skin. So you, you see that Im immediate image of him and that uh, array where he had, it looks like all brown stuff going on there. Well, he needed to start early on to protect his skin with sunscreens. That's the skin type that needs to be well protected from the sun from a very early age. Now he's trying to reverse some of that uh, lack of attention to, to his skin, uh, which has accumulated over a lifetime. So now we're going to see how he actually goes about doing that. Okay, so what we've got going on today is exosomes. These are for the face. So we do this Tixel therapy, which is thermal mechanical ablation. It opens up channels in the skin for the exosomes to be absorbed much more efficient, uh, effectively. And we also have exosomes for the hair. So we're going to use a 1927 nanometer laser. Same thing as drug assisted laser for the hair. Uh, we're doing this instead of PRP. So it's less invasive and hopefully more effective. The protocol is getting my face really, really dry. So I just wash my face, so I'm just drying it off. It's more efficacious when it's dry. So it's uh, 81 titanium little spikes that go in, they're like little pyramid shapes that stab the skin at a depth setting between you know 100 and 1,000 micrometers depth. So it goes pretty deep. Uh, you know, it goes through the epidermis, which is around 100 microns deep. So you're going to affect like the base dermal layers, which is important. And yeah, it heats by 400 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. It'll be like 10 billion Fahrenheit or something. What does it feel like? Uh, feels like feels like you're getting a hot sear on your skin, but it's very quick. The pain to benefit ratio is very high. So in the last decade, there's been a explosive interest in regenerative medicine, and Brian Johnson uh, believes that uh, with uh, multiple uh, injections, uh, lasers, uh, topical and injectable um, uh, serums, he can reverse the uh, signs of aging. Uh, this is certainly a controversial area, whether you can actually reverse aging. I think you can, you can improve uh, the quality of your skin, uh, but what he's proposing is, uh, is still hypothetical and not uh, necessarily real at this moment in time. We're witnessing uh, Brian become an experimental uh, animal, or someone say he's he's a guinea pig, uh, and I actually wouldn't disagree with that. I think he's uh, using a lot of these devices and uh, and trying to throw everything at at himself, so to speak, to reverse aging. But I'm not sure he's going about it the right way. In addition, he says he's uh, approaching this through data and science. Uh, I have to strongly disagree with him. I think a lot of the things that he's picking. Uh, have no data and science behind it, and in particular, uh, this idea of using exosomes uh, to rejuvenate his skin has very poor science uh, uh, validity behind it. Brian has been prescribed by his doctor what, what, what is called a Tixel treatment, which is a non-laser-based uh, heat uh, disruptor on the epidermis of the skin to allow these uh, serums to penetrate into his skin uh, more freely. 
uh, he thinks that uh, the greater pain gives the greater result. And I think that equation is actually false. I don't think you have to have pain in order to get result, like no pain, no gain. I think that's a lot of nonsense. Uh, I, I, so I don't think he takes what I call a truly scientific approach. He thinks that he's, he's uh, taking data and science and manipulating it to his benefit, but I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Now, what exactly are these exosomes? I mean, what is this big magical uh, substance that uh, he thinks is so great? Well, it's actually a, a, a whole mix of DNA, RNA, proteins, cytokines. Uh, these are uh, different uh, substances that are released from each cell in our body. And uh, in terms of the exosomes that he's using, He's using what's called a anti-AGMDX exosome, which, uh, according to their literature, is derived from bone marrow stem cells and human umbilical cord stem cells. And they say it strikes the ideal balance between potency and stability, resulting in a powerful, potent, ultra-pure treatment solution, unlike any other. Well... That's highfalutin nonsense, okay? First of all, these cells, these cells that are derived from bone marrow and from, uh, uh, from uh, umbilical cords are taken from other individuals. We don't know anything about the history of those people that, uh, where these exosomes are extracted from. So to, in my mind, that is very dangerous stuff, okay? I don't believe that this is safe and pure and all that stuff. That is all marketing uh, mumbo jumbo, as far as I'm concerned. It is not a safe product to use on your skin or on your face or anywhere, okay? Because, in fact, the FDA has actually come out and said that exosomes have no substantiated evidence that has been proven to improve skin quality or hair quality in particular, okay? And in 2020, they actually had an alert to say that people marketing that, uh, the, these exosomes were actually, uh, was actually illegal. It has never been approved by the FDA. And as a result, I am strongly against exosomes. Why? because exosomes from various sources, and there's no way to, to uh, verify the sourcing of this material, even though the company says, well, we got it from X, Y, or Z person, we don't know if that person is carrying any diseases that can be transmitted to you as a patient. This is a warning, a warning to you all that you shouldn't just jump on the next bandwagon the next great thing that everybody thinks is terrific. And this is why I think that it is ironic that uh, Brian Johnson, who uh, claims to have uh, a data and scientific approach to uh, uh, reversing aging or regenerative medicine, is really not taking a scientific approach at all. In fact, it's all pseudoscience, in fact. And it's, it's no different than, you know, witch hazel or, or some other brew that somebody comes up with uh, to say that this is going to uh, lead to a long, longer life. So I think that you all have to have a little bit of a skepticism about his approach. That's one thing about Brian Johnson. The second thing is that J Brian Johnson is doing multiple things simultaneously or in rapid succession. He said that, for instance, he, he uh, has used PRP on his hair. He's used minoxidil topically. He's used low light uh, therapy. And now he says, well, let me add something else because the more you add, the better it is. The answer is no, no. You have to give all these technologies time to work, and it may take weeks to months before any individual medication or technology actually will manifest an improvement. So by just rapidly going through all this stuff, it, it, it's good entertainment. Uh, it's fun to watch, but in fact, 
if people try to imitate what Brian Johnson is doing, then I think you're going to end up with uh, problems and potentially long-term problems. I think exosomes have been, uh, you know, potentially associated with prions, which are uh, can lead to uh, dementia. So we don't want to just jump on every new thing that comes down the road. Now, I am not saying that I'm backpedaling on progress. I believe we do have to try out new uh, products and ideas, but those, uh, those products have to go through a vetting process through the scientific community to kind of uh, see if some of these new things are actually uh, beneficial or harmful. And that takes a long time. Everybody is in a rush. They think they're going to come up with the answers and that there's some kind of conspiracy in the scientific community to, to uh, halt progress. This is a false, uh, conceptually a false idea. We in the scientific community, and I, I consider myself a scientist as well as a, as a medical doctor, I take a scientific approach and do things, first of all, in, in a very methodical, slow way to see which procedure or, or injection or medication is going to actually help the patient. And it takes time. It takes a long time. And you can't confuse uh, the end result by throwing 14 things at somebody at once in order to uh, arrive at a faster result. Because in the end, you don't know which of those many different interventions actually have uh, made an improvement. And then you can do like topicals as well at the same time. Uh, exosome, uh, mesenchymal stem cell ex exosomes typically, they can uh, half the recovery time as well, which is nice. It works on all skin types more easily, because there's no light involved. And again, you're not going to get the hair removal. So with many lasers, it's hard for guys to do it around the jaw area because you're going to remove beard. With the drug delivery option as well, you can um, kind of personalize that to the patient's skin condition because it creates these open channels, depending on which settings you use. Ollie, do you think you'll be six weeks or four weeks for this? Um, depends on your recovery. We are using exosomes, so it could be four weeks. You know, in the manual, they do say if you're going on very high settings, then more in the you know, four to eight weeks kind of range. There is no good data to show that more frequency, less frequency, time span between treatments topically will help or hinder the patient. Again, this is all pseudoscience. There's no, there's no good science behind exosomes. And again, I think that they, it looks very innocuous. They're just, you know, they're just painting this stuff on the skin uh, after creating little uh, uh, breakdown of the epithelium from uh, the, pic, the Tixel laser or Tixel machine, it's not a laser. But again, it's not a, uh, a totally innocuous process. It may lead to other uh, problems, and, um, and I don't think it's something you should be considering. We're trying to increase hair growth, and we've been trying things like liquid minoxidil and uh, laser diodes for a hair cap and PRP. We're trying to move on to better stuff, and now we're trying exosomes. He now thinks that exosomes is better than the previously mentioned uh, three items, which, I, again, that's, a, um, that's an assumption he's making. Because it's new, he thinks it's better. New is not necessarily better. Uh, there are procedures and uh, drugs that come down the line that, that are offered to me as a, as a doctor. They're even Some of them are FDA approved, and I don't jump on board because I don't think they're to the benefit of the patient when I really look and delve into what uh, these different devices or drugs do. So don't think everything that's new is better. New is not necessarily equates to better. Brian is unfortunately uh, buying into that concept. This is uh, mixed up. So we're going to use a 1927 laser, open up the channels for the drug delivery, and then deliver the exosomes, which are made of... Yeah, with a combination of uh, 10 billion exosomes per vial. These are anti-age MDX exosomes, and it's a hybrid cocktail, GMP grade, a mix of human bone marrow stem cells and human umbilical cord stem cells. I'm really wondering if I'm Frankenstein. Ollie, am I your Frankenstein? 
Uh, what was that article that came out? It was like, uh, Dr. Strangeblood. <laughs> yeah. That was my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we have it. He actually may be Dr. Strangeblood because this, these uh, proteins may be entering his bloodstream and uh, causing some uh, immunogenic uh, reaction. Now, he's, he's putting them on his, his scalp, and I'm not saying that these, it's impossible for these things to, to actually stimulate hair growth, but that doesn't tell the whole story because the exosome may have other unknown uh, side effects that we don't even know about yet. And it may take years before we actually know what exosomes uh, do. Now, unfortunately, because there's poor standardization of, of extracting exosomes and different companies are making them, uh, it's, it's probably never going to be uh, standardized and uh, therefore there's always going to be uh, a, a risk involved in uh, using exosomes to uh, create a, a, regeneration, a regenerative uh, medicine. Uh, so again, I don't think they're going to be around too long. I think the FDA is going to cr crack down on this stuff. You divide it into sections okay. and then I need to get in here too, yep. okay? Yep. Right. Oh. Okay, cool. That sounds good. Yep. What are these for? Look cool. Yeah. Like you always want to look cool when you're doing a therapy. Never mess around with not looking cool. Okay. One, two. How's that? Fine. So much better, Ollie, than microneedling or yeah. or PRP. So uh, he's using a what's called a 1927 nanometer laser, which is a thulium fiber laser. And yes, uh, and when it's used at, at uh, low settings, it can disrupt the epithelium of the, uh, the scalp and allow um, uh, pro uh, serums to uh, penetrate through the skin into the uh, dermis of the, of the scalp and maybe stimulate hair, hair growth. I say maybe. This is a device that is not unique. Uh, there are other devices that are used ultrasound and um, other means of uh, allowing the epithelium to break down a slight bit to allow serums to penetrate through the skin. So the idea is now to use non-invasive approaches to allowing these uh, drugs to penetrate through the scalp down to the hair follicles to stimulate hair, hair growth. That concept is fine, it's just the, the use of exosomes is where I really take a, a contrary point of view uh, to Brian's uh, approach. As we witnessed, uh, Brian Johnson has, uh, again, uh, acted in a very somewhat experimental way. Even though exosomes are available commercially, uh, they're uh, under the gaze of the FDA, and uh, they're not FDA approved, and therefore, I don't feel they're safe. And uh, I don't believe he's taking a scientific approach at all or data-laden approach to uh, rejuvenating his face or his scalp, I think that he is taking risks and uh, I don't endorse his approach and I hope those people watching will also have a little skepticism and think twice before they choose exosomes as a uh, option to stimulate their skin or their, their scalp. My goal is to give you enough information that you can make informed decisions about any cosmetic procedures that you're contemplating. I Try to take a scientific approach to uh, all these subjects so that you can sort out the hype from the reality and you make good decisions based upon facts and not uh, just hype. My goal, of course, is to keep you safe, and I hope you found this video to be informative and useful, and I look forward to seeing you all as a community in my next videos.